So our example that we're going to work with is Python and MinIO. We're going to be working with our Python library. Now, keep in mind, Amazon has a Python library. Amazon's Python library is Boto3. And in fact, you can actually use the Boto3 library with MinIO because MinIO is S3 compatible. You don't actually have to do anything special to get this going. You simply use the Boto3 libraries. We, however, are going to be using MinIO's own supported library. Now, the MinIO Python SDK does require Python 3.7 or higher. This is because some of the supporting libraries, most notably the CERT libs, are no longer supported in Python 2. So you need to have Python 3.7. This is all easy to install with pip. So those of you who are using Python today know about the, uh, the Python installer pip which allows you to install any library that you want with ease. And the way that you're gonna do that with MinIO is a simple pip3 install MinIO and you're done. That gives you all the libraries that you need to use the Python SDK. The nice thing about the MinIO library, the MinIO SDK versus Amazon's libraries is that most of the tasks can be completed with a simple import statement because the MinIO library is largely method driven, not class driven. So you don't have as many class imports that you have to deal with. You can take a look at the documentation there, but generally speaking, the main thing you're going to need to do is from MinIO import MinIO. And that's, that's it. You're going to generate this MinIO object and then run a bunch of methods against it. The MinIO constructor is very, very simple. It takes a series of arguments to actually connect to the MinIO backend. But this object can be used to perform all the tasks for working with buckets, objects, anything else you need to do. Generally speaking, when we're writing this, we write it out, client is going to be your MinIO object. And that client is where you're going to run all of your various code against. The nice thing about this is that there's this single constructor for all the different possibilities for how you've deployed this. In a local deployment, you really only need an endpoint and a user and a password. A cloud deployment might use some region information. There are also ways to use session tokens and credential providers. All of that stuff is built in, but you still use the same constructor. So I don't need to worry about changing this line of code that often. So I have my client, it's this MinIO, I'm connecting to localhost, I have an access key, I have a secret key, and I'm done. If I'm going out to a cloud instance, maybe I need to go out to play.minio.io, that, by the way, that access key and secret key, those are actually legitimate. You can actually use those to connect to our play.minio.io. And then it has a region associated with it so that you can connect and see what's going on in that environment. But it doesn't matter whether we're talking about cloud or local or whatever we're going to do. It's the same basic constructor. Security is enabled by default. We always want to have secure connections. That constructor is also going to default to using TLS to secure your HTTP. In a local deployment, like a dev environment, like the one that we're using in this course, you may want to turn that off. And in order to do that, you have to explicitly tell it that you're turning it off. So you need to set that secure equals false in the constructor, something like this. So I still have my localhost 9000, my dev access key, my dev secret key, and then I have secure equals false to basically state, yeah, I'm not using HTTPS because the default is to use HTTPS for all this connection work. And just one quick note, always use TLS in production. Don't leave this unsecured in production. That goes without saying, I suppose. So this configuration, if I want to store this outside of my code so that every time I change environments, I'm not having to change a whole bunch of code, what I can do is I can put a config parser into my code that reads a file and that allows me to have credentials stored outside of the code so if I need to update it I just update that credentials file and then every place where I need those credentials can just access that same that same file this is also quite handy if I'm using a token an access token of some kind or some sort of a other provider for my credentials I can use all of that I can read all that in with it with an INI file for instance so the nice thing about this is that if my INI file says something like this, I've got a MinIO with an endpoint localhost 9000. Now I can use that endpoint to connect. I just do a config get MinIO endpoint and I'm good to go. 
I got a little demo of this that I'm going to show you here in just a second that shows this easy conversion between the two.